and welcome everyone. I'm really excited to have you all here today for our weekly deep dive series with OCI Product Management. Uh, for anyone who might be new to these events, uh, we are hosted on Cloud Customer Connect, which is our Oracle community forums for end users. You'll see some links that I'll drop in the chat throughout the presentation today that lead you back to the CCC forums. And if you haven't already, we invite you to create a free account, join in discussions, look for upcoming events like this of all kinds of topics. I'm Kenna Ketrick. I'm a program manager with the OCI Go-To-Market team. And today I'm joined by Flavio Pereira, Senior Manager of Product Management here at OCI. And today he's going to take you through how to begin using Terraform and write your first file. Very hands-on uh, kind of demo sort of presentation today, which I'm very excited about. Before I hand things over to Flavio, I am going to run a quick poll. Anyone who's been here before might recognize this one. Uh, if you would feel free to share your opinions there. Uh, we design these sessions with you in mind. You are our end users. We wanna know what you are interested in. And so if you would share what topics you might be interested in for future sessions like this, that helps me to uh, showcase what you would like to find out more about and create series based on your own interests. Speaking of upcoming events, uh, we do have an event next week on Thursday, July 22nd. We're hosting Sam Cops, who's going to show you how to lower your compute costs by up to 50% using preemptible instances, which are a new kind of compute instance. I'm going to drop a link to our event calendar in the chat in just a moment, and the registration page for that event will be up later today. So if you want to subscribe to that event calendar and join us, we would love to have you back. I'm also going to drop a link to a survey that we run with OCI customers. Again, you are end users. We want to know what your opinions are. So if you have a moment or two to share those, we really appreciate any feedback about your experience. And the usual reminders, uh, please go ahead and use that Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen for questions throughout the entire presentation. There'll be plenty of time for Q&A. And we're also recording today. So if you have people that you think might be interested in this presentation but weren't able to make it, I will be posting the link to the replay. So you can go ahead and share that uh, for anyone that you think might want to see it afterward. All right, I think that is quite enough for me. Uh, take it away, Flavio. All right, thanks, Jenna. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, my name is Flavio. I'm part of the OCI uh, product management team. And I'm here today to you know, talk about how to get started with Terraform uh, actually using OCI. So this is gonna be a very, uh, I would say hands-on session. Uh, I only have one slide. That's the slide you can see on the screen right now. And through all the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna just be like walk you through the OCI console, like how you actually write your Terraform uh, scripts uh, and how you actually deploy this uh, in OCI. So uh, I know we got some requests uh, on the past about these type of sessions, like you know, explaining how to actually set up environment, how to get the Terraform up and running and started, and then how to start walking through some of the configuration files uh, for Terraform. So this is uh, this is the session. So we're going to start with that one. We're probably going to do more in the on the future to improve and get more uh, in depth. Um, of the Terraform knowledge. So I hope everyone here enjoyed. And if you have any questions, just please feel free to use the Q&A uh, uh, part of the session. Uh, I'll be watching the questions uh, over the presentation and then try to answer most of the questions uh, here, okay? Uh, all we're gonna do here today, we're gonna use the OCI Always Free Tier account, right? And if you don't have access to one, um, uh, you, should, you should get access now. So how do you get that? Uh, if you go to the www.oracle.com slash cloud slash free, this is the link that's on my page right now. We can put posted the link in the chat. Can I, if you can do that for me, that'll be that'll be perfect. Uh, so you you can sign up for your account, uh, and you're gonna get a always free um, account that you can use for the rest of the rest of uh, you know of the account. Once you have the account up and running, uh, if you don't you know decided to delete the account or or, or terminate it, everything, so you have those resources free uh, for the entire life cycle of the account. So uh, for those that are new with this, that, that is not familiar with the always free services, uh, uh, I'm gonna just go really quick here and just give you a breakdown of what you get with this account. So when you sign up for for this free tier. Uh, you have access to autonomous database, uh, two autonomous database. You have up to four instances of uh, ARM compute, uh, ARM shape uh, uh, compute, 200 giga gigabytes of block volume and 10, 10 gigabyte of object storage. So you can, this is uh, something you're gonna have uh, on this account uh, to use, um, uh, uh, you know, like I said, for the entire life cycle of the account. And it's very useful if you wanna run a few use cases, like I wanna host my, my web blog or 
I want to host some some of my personal, uh, uh, you know, photo services or, or, or things like that. If you want to host that in OCI, it's very handy. So you you can get get this uh, to get you started, get you introduced to the cloud. If you also learning and trying to get more uh, uh, of yourself, understanding how cloud compute works and what the concepts look like, it's very very good to have these accounts so you can start it out. You can put your hands on the keyboard and just test a few. A uh, few use case here, right? So if you, like I said, if you don't have an account, you just go to this website. You can click on Start for Free, and then uh, all you have to do is just sign up for uh, uh, enter. You know, few informations here. You're gonna have to enter your credit card just to do a validation, just to make sure you you know it's not a robot or anything like that. Uh, and then after that you can start using the account we're not going to charge you uh for this uh, in order to get charged you have to actually say that you want to get charged that you want to upgrade your account uh so yeah you you you're going to be really locked on this uh, always free and you can use all the services uh, uh for this particular session as well right okay so uh once you once you sign up for that account and i'm just going to show here real quick on my my uh, account i have one that i i use to do all the sessions and the presentations i'm just logging to that account here real quick you're going to log into your account and you're going to see that this is this is actually my always uh, free to your account as you can see there's a banner here if i want to upgrade my account i have to upgrade so uh like i said we're not charging you um uh, you know, after a, 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 a specific period of time. So you actually have to opt in to, to get charged for. So when you get access to your account, you're going to see you have some uh, tags that says always free eligible. Uh, those are the services that you can use under the always free. Uh, and it's very, very compelling. You have a good amount of resources uh, that you can use to, to do some uh, some of the you know use cases that I mentioned, and also walk through the style form uh, configuration, right? So yeah, this is this is the account that we're going to use. Um, before I start jumping here uh, on the OCI and, and do all this stuff, let's just talk a little bit about uh, Terraform, right? And how we, we get started with that. Okay, so um, for everyone that's new uh, here, uh, just a little bit of a, a introduction what Terraform is, right? So Terraform is actually a tool that you can use to, to do your infrastructure as code, right? You can actually lay out your entire infrastructure uh, here in OCI using Terraform to automate the deployments. So instead of you using the console like me here going through through the console and trying to create a computing instance or creating a block storage or a database, Right, uh, I can actually automate this through Terraform. I can use the Terraform tool to in, invoke that command uh, through the APIs, and then Terraform will, will kick off and, and deploy all that infrastructure for me uh, in OCI. So if you're starting your, your DevOps journey and you're looking for automation, uh, you, you're looking for environment, like how do I automate this? How do I create more resources at once? Uh, I need to scale. I need, I need to do not only one server, two servers, but like 10, 12, you know, you know 20 uh, servers. Then you're going to start thinking about how you want to automate that task, how you actually do this, right? And Terraform is the tool that we're using uh, as part of OCI to be uh to be the the tool for automation so we decided not to create our own uh you know 30 uh, our own uh, software to do automation uh for cloud uh and we decided to partner with hashcorp and then use their form as the main tool for uh, automation so it's it's very good because it gives us a lot of flexibility uh, if you're using Terraform, you can deploy this not only on OCI, but you can also use other cloud providers uh, to deploy as well. So the syntax of, of the Terraform, uh, it's very familiar. If you, if you came in from uh, Azure, AWS, uh, and Google, and if you're using Terraform there, you, you can apply the same uh, set of skills here uh, as well. Of course, there is difference on how you call the provider and the syntax of the provider, but the overall Terraform usage uh, is still the same. Right. So this is a HashCorp website as well, uh, where we have a partnership with them. Uh, we also have a good uh, documentation and examples uh, here as part of the HashCorp website and how you use Terraform. 
I always recommend you to take a look on this website too, so you can get some of examples how to deploy resources, how to get those resources configured uh, with the form and then deploy an OCI. So it's very, very handy to have access to those uh, websites, okay? All right, so let's get started then. So the promise here is I'm going to walk you through how to actually write your first script and how to get your environment set up for, for Terraform. And there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, you can actually download the Terraform binary and install that on your own machine uh, and, and run that locally on your machine. Uh, or you can also use um, you know, our, our account, the OCI account, and inside of the OCI account, once you log in, you have this cloud shell button here, all the way uh, on the top uh, right. So cloud shell is very, um, it's a very good tool because it provides you other tools, the development tools that you can use without having to install anything on your, on your machine. So I'm actually gonna use Cloud Shell to actually run Terraform. So when I click on Cloud Shell, you can see it's it's loading my, my environment here, my shell environment. It's actually looking at my directories uh, and the files that I have on my, on my uh, home directory. It gave me like five gigabytes of storage on my home directory here. And here I have tools like, I have Python, uh, I have, uh, the OCI command line, and I also have Terraform. So Terraform is ready installed for me. So I don't have to do anything special. So I don't have to actually download the binary, configure in my Windows or, or Linux machine. Uh, all you can do is through the browser. Uh, and that's how we're gonna do today. I'm gonna use the Terraform here inside of Cloud Shell uh, to, deploy, um, to deploy my files. Then the question that I got a lot is like, okay, using Cloud Shell, uh, but how do you actually write your scripts? Where do you do that? You have to write here on this small screen. You have to create the files here and then start working on it. Uh, sometimes it's not very um, friendly to do that. So Cloud Shell give you ability to download and upload files right uh, on this on this shell. Then, which makes easy because now I can actually write my scripts in my editor, uh, my, edit, uh, my preference editor, I use Visual Studio, for example, but you can use any editor you want uh, to, to, to drive this. And then after you write these scripts, you can actually upload it here in Cloud Shell and, and give it a try. And you can run the Terraform uh, to, see, to see how you can, uh, how it works, right? So if you type Terraform uh, and you just do dash dash help, uh, you can see all the, the list of commands you have here for Terraform. I'm going to walk you through some of them uh, in this session as we as we go through. But just to let you know, this is the this is already here. It's already installed, all up and running uh, in, inside of Cloud Shell, so you don't have to do anything else to uh, to run this. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get started then. Instead of me like you know going and writing the scripts here, like I said, I'm going to use. Uh, Visual Studio Code. And I have a set of files that I created beforehand, but I'm gonna walk you through this uh, right now. So, and, and show you what I'm doing to, um, to make the connection between the Terraform and my, my OCI account. So um, the first thing I, have, I, I, I like to do is, is Terraform, it's very flexible in terms of reading the files uh, of Terraform. So as you can see here, I have all the files that I splitted the name of the resources I want to create in multiple files. This is, this is how I call like one of the best practices to do. Uh, so you can identify the resources you're creating based on the file name that you added, right? You can give any, any name you want, as long as you have the extension that's called .tf uh, in this case. All right, so I have network.tf, compute.tf, load balancer.tf. So it's very descriptive that if I click on compute, I'm gonna see all the compute resources here, uh, networking, all network and load balancer and so on. So it gives you a little bit of a, a bit of understanding when you start writing your scripts. Uh, uh, you know, if someone is reading our scripts as well, they know exactly what that file uh, means and what the content inside of it, right? So try to use uh, that so you can split the resources. And when you run Terraform, Terraform is smart enough to understand the components through the files 
and deploy this uh, into your account. So uh, you don't have to create one giant file with everything. Like I said, just split that in multiple ones, okay? So uh, the first file that I like to, to touch is this one that's called Terraform TF bars. And I'm gonna open up here. So what, what the file is actually. So the Terraform TF bars is, uh, is what we call the variable uh, configuration from the Terraform perspective. So when you write that file, Terraform will recognize that you are injecting some of the parameters here and be able to make a connection with those parameters to your, um, uh, your, your, your Terraform variables file. So I'll, I'm gonna talk about that uh, in a minute, but this is how you actually make your authentication. So I, I highlighted here in these Terraform TF bars, I have my authentication settings. So since I'm gonna use Cloud Shell, uh, I, I need to pass here, what is my tenancy ID? What is my SSH public key? In this case, I'm using, I'm gonna spin up a Linux machine and I'm just gonna use an SSH key there. And which compartment I wanna deploy uh, my resources. And then the question will be like, how do you get that information? What do you find this OCID tenancy and the compartment OCID, right? So let's go back here real quick. I'll show you how do I get that information. So in order to populate this, uh, if you, after you log into your account, just gonna minimize Cloud Shell here for a moment. Uh, when you log into OCI, you can see that uh, you have, um, you have information like all the services here on the menu, but here up top uh, where you have your login information, I have the tenancy uh, name. This is my tenancy name. So when I click here, this is gonna open up another screen that's gonna give me the OCID or the identification uh, of that tenants. So I have, I have here the OCID of the tenants. So I need that information. So Terraform can make an authentication to my, my account. So I can copy that and I can add it to through my file here. So I have the tenancy ID here, right? This is one thing. Uh, I'll, let's keep the SSH here for a second. Let's let's take a look on the compartment side. The compartment is where, where I wanna deploy all my resources. So if I have, you know, the construct the OCI account, I have the ability to create compartments and segment the resources based on the compartments I wanna, I wanna uh, add this. So in this case, if you go to the menu and identity uh, and security, you're gonna have the compartments uh, here. And in this particular case, I have a compartment called development, but you could create one, you could create a new compartment. And once you do that, you're gonna have the OCID of that particular compartment. And I'm using uh, that one, the development one. So I'm gonna use that OCID and all the resources that I created uh, with Terraform will be inside of that compartment, now, right? So again, this is how you segmented the, uh, the resources here. Okay, so going back to our file, go back here, then this is how I added the, the compartment OCID, right? Okay, so create my Terraform uh, TF bars, give the information of tenancy, the compartment OCID, the SSH public key, I just added this path because what we can do is if I go back here to my account, look at my cloud shell, uh, I can just create a SSH key uh, in my cloud shell and then use that one. So I can do an SSH to the servers when I deploy uh, them. So I do have an, an, uh, um, a key created here in my home directory. So if I go to my SSH folder, I have this ID RSA pub, right, which is the public key uh, available on in my tenant. So if I check the path, this is the path, this is my home directory dot SSH and then the file ID RSA pub. So that's what I added here as part of my path, okay? So that's the first, the first thing. The second file I want to talk about is this variable uh, .tf file. In this variable .tf file, uh, I start getting the information that I enter from the Terraform TF bars file. So I'm declaring those three variables here. So the tenancy, the compartment, and the SSH public key. So uh, it's getting the information from the Terraform TF files. 
I'm actually I also choosing like which availability domain I want to deploy uh, my resources. So I create a variable here that's called uh, AD. And by default, I'm picking the availability domain tree. And here's one quick tip for you, right? When you're using the OCI account and you sign up for the hours free, you're going to be uh, hooked up to a, a specific region, to a home region that you're going to decide when you sign up, right? And that home region is where you're going to have the resources that are part of the eligible free tier that you can use as part of your account. So how do you know that? So when I sign up for, me, for my account, Phoenix region is, is the home region that I have, right? And inside of Phoenix region, I have three availability domains. I have AD1, 2, and 3. So if I go back here on compute and instances, just for the sake of finding that information really quick, uh, if I try to create an instance through the console, uh, I'm going to see here, it's going to pick up the always free eligible by default. And it's going to tell me which availability domain those resources are available, right? So then all my resources uh, that it's part of the hours free eligible, it's inside of the availability domain three. So then automatically when I'm writing my Terraform script, I have to select that as the default one, right? Again, I'm using the hours free. Uh, if you're using a regular account, you don't have the restrictions to be under the hours free, then you can pick any of the ability domain you want that, that will be part of that region, okay? So that's the, the first variable I added. Uh, I'm gonna walk through the rest of the variables here uh some of them will be really quick some of them will, I'll, I'll take more time to explain so make more sense for you all to understand uh, how to put it together so i created variables for my vcn so i have a variable from a vcn so when i created my network component i want to know what's the cider block that i want to associate it to it and then uh, i have here decided that i want to use the 10 0 0 slash 16 cider as, as part of my my variables for vcn I also create a variable that's called DNS uh, label. How are we going to call my, my VCN? I'm going to call VCN01. That's the, the value that I want to, I want to call up. My subnet uh, label, what is the subnet name you want to use? I'm just going to use subnet. I could put any name I want, just use subnet here uh, as the, the, the full one. Operating system image, like when I, when I start creating my computing instances, what are the uh, Linux image that I want to use, right? In this case, I'm using Oracle Linux and the version that I want to use is the 7.9, right? Uh, I could have, you know, other CentOS OS, Ubuntu, uh, and I'm going to show how to actually grab that information from the data source real quick. But this is what I want to get from uh, this deployment. I want to use Oracle Linux 7.9. Compute shape. Uh, what are the compute shape you want to use? So as part of the always free uh, tier, the compute shape that's available to you is this E21 micro, right? Uh, that's the, the, the one that's available and the ARM shapes are available as well. But in this case, I'm gonna use the E21 uh, micro uh, shape. So, and I added the name of the, of the shape here, right? This is what the shape will be. If you don't know the name of the shape, just, for you to find when I try to create a computing instance manually, it's gonna tell me right here, what is the name of the shape? So we can get that information from here, okay? So the, the last part of the variable is my load balancer shape. So in this, in this configuration, I'm creating two web servers, one load balancer uh, as part of my deployment. And on the load balancer, I'm using the flag shape of load balancer. And I'm using one that says 10 uh, megabits as the minimal bandwidth and also 10 megabits as the maximum bandwidth. So I'm restricted to the shape of 10 megabits for this load balancer. So I created this part able to, uh, to call that out, okay? All right, so this is the variable file. Now let's just start jumping on some of the files here to actually create the resources. The first part of the resource that I want to create is my network, is my VCN. So let's just open up here this real quick. So when I want to create the VCN, I have to write the resource components here uh, to get my VCN uh, created, right? So if you're familiar with the VCN uh, in OCI, uh, you know you have a few components there. You have 
the internet gateway, you have the subnet, you have the, uh, the security lists, right? Uh, if you have a DRG, if you have, um, uh, you know, peering, all, all that type of component is part of the VCN. And then when you construct your VCN for this particular use case, you have to think about it. If I'm just deploying two web servers and a load balancer, what do I need, right? I need the basic uh, of the VCN to be at least loaded. Right. So in this case, I, I declare here, this is the VCN that I want to create. It, the resource here is called OCI underscore core underscore virtual network. And I'm giving the name as VCN. And just for Terraform information here, this name here must be unique, right? Uh, inside of your file. So if you're calling this uh, OCI core network VCN, make sure you don't use that, don't repeat that information in any other part of your, your file. This is a unique name. Uh, you can give any name you want, as long as that is unique through the entire file, okay? So when I create a VCN, I have a few things that I need to enter. Uh, if I'm doing that through the console, I have to select which compartment I wanna place that VCN. What is the cider block of that VCN? What is the name of the VCN, right? The, the DNS label and the name there. So as you can see, I'm calling from the variable files now. So I'm using the compartment OCID, which I, I got that on my Terraform TFR files. I'm getting my VCN cider block from the variables uh, as well. I'm getting the DNS label and the display name from the variables that I put it there too, right? So that means if I go back to the variables and change the name and redeploy, that's gonna create a new VCN with a new name, uh, with new uh, cider block, right? If I change the cider block as well, okay? Why it's important to using variables here? Because again, it gives you the flexibility of if you need to make some change on your environment, just to duplicate the same environment in another tenancy or in another region or another availability domain, you can also uh, just go into variables and change the information there so you don't have to touch the, the information here. Try to avoid to hard code your information inside of, uh, inside of the resources. That's one, one of the other best practices is, you know, avoid this. Use, declare all these inside the variables so you can make the change there, right? So this is the VCN. I also need to create an internet gateway. So internet gateway is going to give us ability to allow our services to go out, right, uh, outside of the outside of the the internet. So I'll be able to create my VCN and then let my resources, my compute resources, to be able to talk uh, with the external uh, public internet. Then I need the internet gateway for that. I also need which compartment internet gateway will leave, what display name, and now this is the important piece the VCN ID. So this is how I start making the connections between the VCN and the components of that VCN. So I can have this internet gateway and that internet gateway gonna belong to the VCN that I created here above, right? As you can see, I'm just calling the OCI core virtual network, which is the resource right here. And the name of that resource, which is the VCN, and I'm picking up the ID, right? So what that means is, <clears throat> When the form read that file, it's going to create the VCN. And once they generated the VCN, they're going to start going through the other components. When they go to the internet gateway and say, okay, now I need to create the internet gateway, I'll be able to make a connection that this internet gateway will, will be part of this VCN because I'm saying on this VCN ID, which, which VCN this internet gateway will belong, okay? Um, yeah, you can say, Flavio, I want to create multiple VCNs. Can I add this to this network file? Yes, if you have an environment you have multiple VCNs you want to create, you can use the network file to do that. And then again, make sure that the name you're using here is unique and you're associating the components to the specific VCNs you're creating uh, there, right? Okay, so understanding this make our understanding of the rest of the file a little bit better and understanding how to make those connections in terms of variables and all, and all, all that. Also need a route table. Uh, and again, same, same thing. I need a compartment. I need to place on a specific VCN. I have to give it a name, right? What's the name I wanna to give to this, uh, to this route table? And what's the rule that will be part of this route table? So in this case, this route table is gonna be everything that goes to 000 slash zero or 
any network, just send the traffic to this uh, to this uh, internet gateway, right? And I'm associating what's the internet gateway I want to do here. As you can see, I'm start plugging the things, plugging the VCN, create the internet gateway, plugging the route table, and the route table will be associated with the VC with the internet gateway as well, uh, and so on. Now we have the subnet, right? So how do I construct my subnet here? The subnet needs to be placed in one of the ability domain, right? Uh, so, and I don't have the information here uh, for a viability domain. Why is that? Because I want my subnet to be cross, uh, uh, I would call regional subnets. They cross all viability domains uh, in that particular case. So I have two options. I can make the subnet AD specific or region, region, uh, region uh, across regions, right? Then that's what I'm using. I'm using across regions. I want to say create a subnet. And if I have three availability domains, that subnet will span all the three availability domains in this case. Okay. But yeah, if you have a need to pick up a specific availability domain, you can also do that. Okay. Compartment, uh, same thing, which VCN ID I'm associating just this subnet. What's the cider block? And this is one thing I want to I want to talk a little bit here. Uh, so I'm using a function inside of a inside of a Terraform to make the the to make the calculation of the VCN cider uh, for me in this case. Right. So if I'm using 10 0, 0, 0 slash 16 uh, as my cider block, and I want a slice of that uh, that cider to be my VCN then I'm using a function inside of a tail form to calculate that for me. So I'm using the VCN cider block, which is the variable that I declare in the variable file. And I'm putting the, the eight bits here. And I'm telling that's gonna be one is the number of my network, right? So in this case, if I have slash 16, I just do slash 16 plus eight, which is 24. Then my, my cider for the subnet will be 10, 0, 0, 10, 0, 1, 10, 0, 1, uh, dot 0 slash 24, right? That's going to be my cyber block for that subnet. So this is very handy because you don't have to do, you don't have to hard code it, right? And you, you don't have to actually do these multiple variables uh, to add as part of your subnet. You can just type the cyber block inside of the variable file and then giving the function inside of a uh, form to make the calculation for you, right? And with that, uh, if you want to know more about this function, and I have this page open up here, uh, that can give you all the information, like give you some examples and how to do the calculation, how to actually uh, make this easy for you to, to do the, the, the subnets and net masks, right? Uh, so yeah, you can take a look on this site. I'm going to post this on the, on the, on the chat as well. Okay. All right. So this is going to create my my cider block for the subnet. I'm going to add my DNA, the the labels, right? The name of my subnet. My subnet also need a route table. So we created a route table up top, and I'm actually making the association here uh, for the route table. I also need a secure list, right? And in this case, I'm creating a secure list here uh, at the, at the bottom, but I'm making association here. And you're going to ask me, okay, Flavio, you put in the secure list at the bottom, like, is Delform reading the files from top to bottom? No, that's not, that's not how it works, right? Delform is smart enough to understand that some of the components, they, uh, they what we call it, there's a graph that the Telform does when you execute it, that he, based on the, on the resources, the provider, in this case, OCI, they know which resource should be created first. And then once you do that, Terraform will design this graph. It's just a, a graphical uh, thing that he will, will make like step one, step two, step three, step four, and put it in a sequential way, like which resources should be created uh, before the other resource. For example, I won't be able to have a, a, a compute instance if I don't have a network set up. Then the network needs to be created first, and I have to create the uh, the compute resource. You can also do things in parallel. If you recognize I can have a compute resource created and I can have a load balancer created at the same time. Yes, that's fine as long as, as I have the VCN created uh, first. So uh, yeah, he can do that too. It's very smart and that's why it become very fast in, in deploy uh, those things, okay? 
Then yeah, my secure list is here at the bottom. And the secure list that I have, it's basically allowing uh, you know, access through SSH, SSH and the port 80, right, on the HTTP. Because I'm gonna create two web servers and I wanna give access to my load balancer to reach out those web servers through the port 80, right? And also I want to SSH to my servers. So I'm going to give access to it. Could I be more restricted? Yes, I can be more restricted if I want to. I'm just open up to everyone to do an SSH here. But as long as they have the key, so I, I'm the only one that has the, the SSH key uh, to get access to the server. But yeah, you could be more restricted as well. Okay. All right, quick check on time here uh, as, as we're going through this. So this is, like I said, this is the first part of the series. I'm going to walk you through some of the files here, and then we're going to have another webinar, and then we're going to walk through the rest of the files so you can understand the full, the full concept here, okay? So we, we touch the network, we touch the variables, the Terraform files. Let's see here, uh, we have one more. Let's just touch the data source real quick so I can understand how I pick it up uh, information about availability domains in my tenancy, and how do I pick up the list of images available uh, in my tenancy as well. So the data source here uh, is, is, is good because when you need to know information about your account before you make a selection, in this case, uh, I wanna make, I wanna understand what availability domains are available uh, inside of my tenancy, right? For that particular region. I can use a data source to uh, actually get that list. So Terraform will use that to go and do a query on, on the tenancy and, and hold that information. Like now I know how many availability domains I have for that particular, that particular uh, tenancy. And then you can use the data source, you can call the data source in other files to actually say, okay, now that you have that information, I wanna use AD1, AD2, or AD3, right, uh, in this case. That's one way to, to do that. There's more data sources you can do. Um, uh, that you can use. I'm just using just this basic example of capturing availability domains. There's a long list of data sources uh, you can query uh, inside of the, the account. Uh, this is another one. I'm using the data source for images. So if I wanna know what kind of operating system I have available uh, to install my, com my compute resources, right? Uh, so instead of me going through the console and looking at the list of images and like picking up the name and adding as part of my variable file, I wanna use a data source. I wanna say data source, go there uh, on the OCI core images uh, where we have the compute images on this compartment ID that I told you, right? Look for the image operating system that I actually enter in my variable file, which is uh, Oracle Linux and look for the image version 7.9 that I entered there, right? That's actually, and check if that's part of the shape that I, uh, I'm using. So if, if that shape support that particular, uh, that particular uh, operating system. And then sorted by time created and, uh, and, and the order is, is descendant, right? So what happened is that data source will have that information. I'm gonna go and query that list. And based on the information that I gave, I gave Oracle Linux 7.9, and you're gonna look at that and say, oh, okay, I found that image. So when you found that image, then you hold that information. And then I here, let me show you on uh, the compute side, the compute side. Then here I do the lookup on the data source to find, uh, to actually use that image. So the first entry you got of the array so you can actually add um, uh, as, as the image to be installed on my compute system, right? So you can do lookups uh, inside of this. Another example here, I'm doing a lookup on, not a lookup, but I'm actually getting the information of the data source of the availability domains that got listed on here. So from that data source, I'm gonna say my, um, availability domain that I, I put it on my variables is the foe is three, right? But uh, of course the, the array, when you do the array, you have zero, one, and two. So you start with zero and then I have the default as three. So that's gonna do a count um, 
three, three minus, minus, minus one is gonna be uh, two. And in this case, two here means availability domain three, right? So that's easy for us as not doing all the whole math in our head, just to understand which ID I wanna put. If I put a three, that's gonna go on availability domain three. If I put two, that's gonna go on two, but I'm just doing a quick, uh, you know, compute math here to actually get the exactly availability domain that I, I need, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stop here because this is gonna take more time and I wanna take to the questions uh, as well. And I wanna have another session where we finish up the compute, computing instances and we walk through like the computing instances and how actually I do scripting and all that stuff. So I'm gonna stop here because now I wanna go to my OCI account and I'm gonna show how to deploy everything that I did here uh, on the Cloud Shell. So let me just do this. Uh, I'm gonna cancel this. And in my Cloud Shell here, I already have um, this, my resource folder, which, is, which has the same information, right? I have the Terraform TF vars, uh, I have the variables, right? Uh, same, same thing here. Uh, I just, you know, uploaded here beforehand, but I, I could zip the file, like I said, and just do a, a upload and upload the file here. If I click here, upload, I can just, you know, select the file from my computer. That's gonna load it up here uh, on the cloud shell, right? So I have all the Terraform files here. So what the first thing you have to do in order to start deploying your resources? So, First thing you have to do, and I'm just gonna make this bigger a little bit so you can, uh, you can see better. Let's just go do this. When I do Terraform, um, I have to do Terraform init. So to initialize the, the Terraform. When I do that, Terraform will go and you know, connect with the HashCorp backend grab the latest OCI provider that's available, right? This is the, the, the latest one. And, you know, make sure that everything is supported. So I have all the, the OCI provider uh, in, in my Terraform environment here, okay? So now what I can do is I can do a Terraform plan. What is the plan? The plan is, is gonna look it over to the files you just created uh, and make sure like, Am I able to reach the data sources? Am I able to, um, you know, check the, the make sure that the variables are, are correct? Are they able to get all the information from the tenancy, uh, all that before you start deploying the resources. The plan is a good practice to do it to validate it that everything you you actually wrote it, it's uh, it, it works right. When I do a plan, as you can see here, it just told me like you have two, 12 resources that you're gonna add. Right, there's nothing to change, nothing to destroy, but actually go all the way through the uh, to the configuration uh, of the files and say, okay, you're gonna create computing instances, you're gonna create network, you're gonna create load balancer, you're gonna create all that, and you start actually spitting out that information for me uh, uh, in this plan, right? And then I don't have any errors. It feels like you're good to go, right? So. Then in order to start deploying things on the, on the server, and I'm just gonna do this real quick here because I wanna show you this happening right here. So the, I'll leave on the computing instances. I'm gonna do Terraform apply. And that's gonna actually start the deploying uh, of the resources. So when I do that, it, it runs again, uh, the plan and say, hey, you have 12 resources to add. And you, give, you ask me a question. Are you, do you wanna, do you wanna perform this action? Do you wanna actually do it? So, and I said, yes, I wanna do that. And then you can see, you're gonna start creating. First thing you start to do is creating my VCN, right? And then all the components related to the VCN. And then now we start going through my load balancer and at the same time, start provisioning my, my web servers. And you can see here, the web server just starts showing up uh, uh, into the console, right? So now you know, the Terraform will, it, it's looking through the files and start provisioning everything uh, that I created there. So if I go to the, to the network portion, 
I can see uh, the VCN, right? The VCN is here. Uh, this is the, the CIDR block uh, that, uh, that got created, right? And I can see all the components, the subnet and like the subnet, like I said, the calculation of the functions did for us and put it the 10, 0, 1, 0, slash 24. This is regional subnet. Uh, created my route tables. There's a route table here that I call VCN01 uh, public route table. And in this route table, I have this rule, the destination for the internet gateway, like we did, like we put it on the file, right? So let's see here, what else? Oh, the secure list. Uh, let's see the secure list. Secure list, create a secure list, a public secure list and which I have uh, the rules to allow us to do port 80 and, and SSH, right? Okay, so like I said, I wanna, I wanna have another session that we go over to the load balancer configuration entirely, the compute configuration entirely, but this is just to get, get you started on how you use your, your Terraform. So, you don't have to install anything on your computer. You can use the OCI account. You can use Cloud Shell to do it, um, to, to get you uh, up and running. You can use your, your, your editor. You can use Visual Studio Code or Sublime or you know, any other uh, editor uh, that you, you preference to start writing your Terraform code. I like Visual Studio because it has, um, has some, um, extensions you can add for Terraform syntax. And then as you can see, you show you some of the like colors and syntax and kind of align you on the Terraform side. So there's an extension you can install uh, as part of your Visual Studio code, okay? Um, yeah, so I hope this is, was helpful, just kind of getting started, get you to the variables, to the Terraform TFRs, how do you make the connection with the tenancy and the Terraform and then you know how to execute the, the script. So as you can see here, is as you finish, there's 12 resources that got added. Uh, and let's just go here and take a look real quick. I have compute instances uh, up and running. Should have all of them here. We all have public IPs, and I can also do an SSH from here to those uh, instances. So if I pick up the public IP, for example, of this one. I can connect here, right? And that's my, my web server, uh, zero 01. If I look at the, the IP, the private IP, 10111, that's uh, what was associated as this web server one. So now I can check the network and just look at the load balancer. I didn't touch the load balancer configuration here. I'll do that in the next session, but this is uh, this load balancer. Mission critical, still like, validating the, the backend. This is just take a while, load balancer just to validate the, uh, the information behind the scenes uh, for all the servers. But you can see it got the public IP. Uh, and if I look at the backend set, I do have my, my backend servers uh, associated to, to that. All right, so as you can see, start showing some connections here uh, with the backend set. Is doing some uh, validation uh, with the with the backends, so yeah. So those are those are the two servers, the 10, 0, 1, uh, 1, 11, and this one two oh three is my second server uh, that's available there. Okay. All right. So let me just go real quick here to through the questions and and see what we have. Why this is making the, the check uh, on the load balancer. Okay, so first question here uh, on the Q&A. Hi, uh, is this used, uh, AJ asking here, I, is this used for one-time activity or repetitive task that's uh, being automated? So if you're asking about the, the tail form, uh, I would say used for repetitive task that's being automated, right? So yeah, like I said in the beginning, tail form is going to help you to automate the process for, you know, if you have to create multiple environments and you, you, you operating uh, your account and you have, you know, environments that you need to spin up uh, every week or maybe every day, right? And you have a repetitive environment for that one, all, all, tail form is good for that. 
Uh, Terraform is also good to lay out your first initial infrastructure, even if you're not going to touch that infrastructure anymore, but at least give you a blueprint of what exactly you deployed at the beginning uh, of your account. Uh, so I always use that mantra. If you have to do that you know, more than one time, the same thing, then try to automate it. Uh, that's, that's how uh, you, should, uh, you should approach this. So the question, Ifran asking, asking, what Visual Studio version are you using? Um, great question. So let me just take a look here. But uh, this is going to be uh, 1.56. Uh, that's the one I'm using. Okay. Uh, other questions here. Where you mentioned the region in case uh, we are subscribed to multiple regions? Where you're mentioning the region in case we're subscribed to multiple regions. Okay, so uh, here's the thing, right? If I'm running, if if I if you want to deploy in a different region, then the, what you have to do is on the Terraform TFRs, you can add a region um, uh, uh, information here, and you can put in the name of the region. How do you get the name of the region? Uh, if you go here on this list, you can see um, you know the regions uh, names you can get. So US Phoenix is uh, the region that I, uh, I'm using here. If you switch to um, you know, Ashburn, US dash Ashburn is another one that you can add it. So you, can, you just have to make an entry to provide the region uh, name there, okay? So another question here, can we use customer DNS domains for OCI resources, compute, et cetera, and do not uh, and do we have to customer DNS in that case? So you can you can use um, in, you know internal customer uh, DNS names. You can do it. So if you want to use our DNS services to actually validate it and put your your you know DNS information, yeah, there is a way to do that. There is a services uh, that we can use uh, here as part of OCI uh, that you can enter your custom uh, DNS uh, domain uh, for your OCI resources. And then, you know, when you created a resource, you can just add this, it's going to be part of this DNS, um, internal DNS. Another question here from Ravi, do we need to provide information uh, for a standby load balancer too, or will be automatically configured when we create a load balancer? Great question. So load balancer will be automatically uh, uh, created uh, in failover mode. So you don't, you don't see this, but the load balancer itself, it's high available. Behind the scenes on the infrastructure that we take care of, and that's what we take care of for our customers, is if there's something wrong with one part of the load balancer, the other uh, you know, load balancer, the primary one or the secondary one will take over. And it's very transparent for the customer. Uh, you don't see that because you don't, you don't need to. It's all handled by us. We, can, we take care of the high availability behind uh, the load balancer in this case. Second, uh, another question here for VJ, is there a Python script which can convert these network components from an Excel or CVS file to Terraform scripts? Uh, well, yeah, I, you know, you, you can be really uh, creative on this uh, if you want to. Uh, you can use a Python script um, to capture information from an Excel file, transform that in a CSV or, or like a JSON file and actually, you know, inject this through Terraform. There's, there's a lot of things that, you know, you can be really creative, like I said, you can do that. Uh, not only Python, you can use other languages too, uh, uh, if you want. Uh, and, and yeah, there's a, there's a way to do it. I can explore and see if I can bring up an example in my next web, web quests uh, on this, but that, that can be a, a possibility. So you can, you can fill up the information in an Excel file and just extract the information from there. Uh, another question, how do you generate Terraform files from the existing environment? Uh, yeah, great question. So Terraform has an option uh, that it can read the information inside of your, um, inside of your you know, tenancy. Uh, and I, let me just take a look here. I think this is called Terraform. Let me just do a Terraform. I think there's Terraform discovery. Um, let's see here. or import, oh, it's import. So you can do Terraform import and then import existing infrastructure to Terraform. So it's gonna read the, the, the services and uh, the information you created inside of the account and then import that into a file, right? Uh, one caveat though, uh, not all resources are supported in, in sometimes. You have to do some, some testing with this. 
uh, do a Terraforming port for a few resources you have created manually and see how that's going to show up on your, on your file and, uh, and if that's going to pick up everything that you actually put it over there. I, I, you know, initially when they released that version, I remember it was very like minimum uh, type of uh, information it could grab. Probably now it's better. Uh, I need to do another test, but I'll, I'll, I'll just go with, with careful on this. Just do a, a little test and see how, how many resources you can extract from there. Other questions, how does one send local, uh, send the local files in Visual Studio code to the OCI, to the CLI? Oh, great question. Like I, I was showing here, you can just do uh, download and upload files, uh, and then you can send files to the cloud shell and out of the cloud shell through your computer. Uh, another question here, if I want to provision my new resources to existing network VCN and subnet, is that Terraform support dynamically pick based on a user input and create resources. Uh, basically, I don't want to log in the OCI console and get the OCI ID for each network resources and hard coded in my Terraform development script. Yes, uh, absolutely. So uh, that's that's like important part of this script is, let me just go back here real quick, is when you start using the VCN ID, right? The ID portion of here. So. If I run that file and now let's say, now that I run it, I wanna add another subnet, right? I can just go here on this same file, just copy that block of subnet, create an, a, a different subnet. And all I'm gonna do is, is connect through the VCN ID. So then Terraform, because the Terraform will have the state file, they will understand your infrastructure while you deploy through Terraform. It's gonna be smart enough to say, okay, that VCN already exists, and you're actually using the VCN ID for this new subnet. It's just going to create that subnet uh, without you like passing all the OCID each time uh, for your uh, your uh, file. So yeah, dynamically you can get this. Another question: Would we'll be able to share the code base for reference? Yes, absolutely. I'll share this. I'll put it that on a on a GitHub uh, repo. And Ken, I think you might have the, the names of participants here and I'm gonna make sure you guys have uh, you know, this code available for you so you can start uh, testing this too. We can add it, Flavio, we can add a link to that to the replay post on the forums. Okay. Uh, which I can put, I'll put again in the chat for folks but we can just add that into that post so it'll be along with the replay of the video. We'll have a oh, link. Okay. Um, okay, good. Uh, all right, another question here. Can I use the same Terraform script created at Cloud Shell into Resource Manager? Is there anything I have to change in the script for Resource Manager? Uh, yeah, and I think we might want to do a webcast just to cover that portion. Um, there's a few things you have to kind of clean up a little bit uh, to transform your Terraform inside of the Resource Manager. So from the cloud shell, it's not gonna be that much change. I can tell you this because you're already authenticated uh, through, uh, through the cloud shell when you executed this. Uh, but there's other things, other elements you can add it as part of resource manager. So for example, you can add a schema YUM file where you wanna, you wanna um, create a, a specific uh, UI for resource manager to pick up resources. And kind of like, instead of you doing the variables through a file like that, it can be a UI for the customer. Like when you deploy resource manager stack, it gives you a UI where you select the, the variables uh, that you want to add as part of Terraform stack. But that's a good suggestion. I want to do a webcast just like, hey, now that you have Terraform, how do you transition this to, to resource manager? Um, we'll put that in our, in our list. Uh, another question, which editor available for Terraform to create a modify Terraform file? Uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, Visual Studio is a good editor, uh, like I said. Sublime uh, is another one uh, that has a Terraform um, extension. I think there's another one called Atom uh, as well that, that you can use as like extensions for Terraform. So those are all good, uh, you know, editors that can give you some of the syntax uh, when you start writing the Terraform file. Other questions here. Are the Terraform scripts going to be shared? Yes, we'll, get, we'll share this. We're going to put it in a public Git repo uh, so you can get access to it. Uh, are the variables used in all the configuration files? Are they predefined or can we name them any? Where will we get that information regarding the key resources, data sources, et cetera? Yes, good. So yeah, the variables here, um, you know, the variable name can be any name you want to. 
right? This is, you, you're calling the variable, you're declaring the variable there, and then you put it the name you want. The value is the value that you want as well. But the structure for the variable is like that. Variable, main, default, which is the value, and, you know, between uh, brackets. This is, this is the kind of the syntax of to declare uh, the variable. And yes, I'll give you the list of resources on that email that we sent it, we sent it to everyone. I'll make sure we have the list of resources, uh, data sources you can get. I also use a hash corp and a GitHub repo with examples too. And I'm, I'm going to make sure I share this with everyone uh, on this call. Uh, okay, so I think Shekai, oh, you just follow up on the question. I mean, customer DNS infrastructure for name resolution. Oh, you're talking about external DNS or internal DNS? I think that's maybe uh, my confusion here, trying to understand which one you, you, you're trying to associate it to it. Um, Another question, can Terraform be used for terminating resources too? Oh yeah, well, let's do that real quick here. Um, before I do, let's see, networking load balancer. Just wanna see if my load balancer here is, oh, let's just change my region. Yeah, okay, so load balancer is good. I just check the page here to see everything's working, but we're gonna destroy this anyway. So yeah, I can see, okay. Yeah, it's accessing my, my web servers. There you go. So we have web server one, web server two behind my load balancer. But yeah, the question is, can I destroy this? Yeah, we can do Terraform destroy. And that's gonna destroy everything we did. Oh, the other question I usually got is, can I destroy just a specific part of my infrastructure? Yes, you can do that too. You can also call out, uh, which portion you want. And then the option for this is to do, uh, let's see here, uh, output, right? So you can use the output and, and then specify a specific resource uh, you, wanna, you, wanna, you wanna destroy. So yeah, if you do Terraform destroy, it's gonna go and read the infrastructure there uh, of a Terraform state and then say, okay, now nothing to add, 12 to destroy. You wanna, you wanna do that? So yes, I wanna do that. So I wanna go ahead and destroy uh, everything. So now my whole entire infrastructure will get um, deleted. Another question, what's the impact of change of Terraform version on OCI resources? Um, great, great question. So we, we, we keep the parity uh, when we have new resources uh, released in OCI. Uh, we make sure that we updated the OCI provider to support that resource. And if there's any change on the Terraform, uh, on the HashCorp side as well, uh, we always like, as we have the partnership with HashCorp, always looking at what that will change, if there is any impact on the, on the provider uh, that we're currently, we're currently using, if there is any change that needs to be executed on the, on the resources to support this new uh, Terraform version. So far, um, all the changes that are being uh, gradually changed on, on the Terraform, uh, they change things on the syntax. And like sometimes uh, I remember from the Terraform version 11, for example, uh, all the resources here, uh, just to give you a a good example. So for example, when you go to the network here, all the, the call out of the variables inside of the resource, I have to use double, double uh, um, brackets, but um, uh, double code, sorry. But now I don't need to use that anymore. So that was one thing that changed from Terraform 11 to 12. So some of the syntax changed and they added things too, like there is more kind of a language structure now added to the Terraform. You can do for loops, you can do, uh, um, uh, you know, count all that stuff. So there's uh, some of the structure of logic on the language of the Terraform that changes along the way. That's also useful uh, when you're trying to automate it multiple things. Like you can, you can reduce the amount of code you write uh, by adding some of the functions that uh, the Terraform provided to you. Uh, okay, so another question. Can you import existing resources as Terraform code? Um, yeah, hey, Dan. Uh, yeah, so you can, you, you can import. There is a Terraform import uh, uh, command uh, that you can do that. I, I, I mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, a few, few minutes back is like, this is just be careful, like when you use this and when uh, uh, what, um, what resources uh, is gonna come out after this Terraform import. 
uh, first time I, I, I did this, wasn't all resources available there, but you, you can do that. Another question, what's the impact of change? Oh, I, I think I answered that question already. Um, let's see, what's the web script shell file actually? Oh, okay, uh, I didn't touch that and I'll, I'll hold that for another web session, but the web script just in like high level, just answer for you is actually how I do the configuration of the web server. How do I install Apache? How do I actually uh, create my HTML file uh, inside of the web server? So I'm actually doing things inside of the, the web script uh, just to install uh, things inside of my machine. Last question is, can I run YAM file uh, using Terraform? Um, yeah, so yes, uh, maybe, you know, this is a thing that we need to probably show an example too. But there's like few ways you can use the YAM file. It's a cloud init uh, script that you call out to do some configuration inside of a machine. Um, you can use the YAM file to capture information as, as variables like resource manager um, it's able to use today and to get that information inside of, a, inside of your files. Yeah, so there is, there is ways you can use the YAM file uh, with that form. All right, I think I went over to the time here. Uh, and I think I got up most of the questions you answer. So thanks everyone for stay all the way up to this. And like I said, we're going to have another session, another webcast, where I want to walk through the rest of the files and then, you know, we can answer more questions related to it. And I'm, I'm here to, you know, hear feedback, uh, uh, from you all. If you have any requests for specific sessions in the future, uh, especially for Terraform topic, I'd like to, to have those so we can plan ahead our, our line of topics here and go more deep dive sessions as I think everyone is ask, ask for that at the beginning of the call. Yeah, definitely. We'd love to have you back as, as soon as we can. <laughs> this yeah. is one of the most engaging topics that we have consistently. So yeah. thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around a little bit late. Um, if you want to stick around for just one more moment, we'll launch a final poll. This is our regular one that we always do as well. You might recognize that. Um, and we will definitely set up some uh, follow-up sessions about this and continue on some of these topics and some of the deep dives into the questions that people have answered or asked rather um, so that we can answer those and, and get our hands dirty looking at, at how to do that. Um, I will make sure to add that GitHub link. Flavia, if you send that to me, we'll add that to the replay as well so that anyone who uh, watches this can also play around with that code and, and see what you were working with too. So we should have that resource out for everyone as well. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for sticking around for a little extra time and uh, we'll see you next time.